speaker. So Anita Thomas is presenting her Pathways Level 3 project, researching and presenting. She has chosen the topic of how communities throughout the country can begin to grapple with whether or not to remove, relocate, or preserve the legacy of controversial Confederate monuments. She will examine the reasons for the commissioning of these, commissioning of these statues, some 1,500 of which exist throughout our country, and nearly 300 of them in Georgia, Virginia, and North Carolina. Anita will look at New Orleans specifically and the journey that the city took toward how to reconcile its past as the largest slave market in the country with the future it saw for itself as the mecca for food, music, art, architecture, and the inclusion of people from every corner of the earth, a cultural gumbo, as then Mayor Mitch Landry described it. Anita will offer proposed ways forward to consider as well as her personal opinion. Anita's time is five to seven minutes, and her speech, is, her speech title is, It's the Right Time to Do the Right Thing. The Germans have an eight-syllable word, naturally, can you imagine? I, I couldn't even begin to try to pronounce it for you today. But that word means the struggle to overcome the negatives of the past. If any country understands those struggles, I'm guessing it's Germany. When George W. Bush dedicated the National Museum of African American History and Culture, he said, a great nation doesn't hide its history. It faces its flaws and corrects them. Perhaps after 150 plus years since the end of the Civil War and the passage of the 13th Amendment, we can begin our journey toward restorative justice regarding slavery and the Jim Crow era, which I'm certainly old enough to remember. Now the lightning rod for these issues about slavery, of course, are Confederate monuments and statues that glorify generals and slaveholders. I think the most important thing to recognize is that these monuments were erected as part of the movement of the cult of the lost cause. It sounds romantic, doesn't it? The Confederacy had one goal in mind, and that was to hide the truth. The truth being that the Confederacy was on the wrong side of humanity. Confederate leaders just rewrote and rebranded history to depict it as the valiant struggle to preserve states' rights. Now, if you know anyone, as I do, believe it or not, who still argues this point today, you may safely assume that they have drunk the Kool-Aid. Going back to New Orleans, in 2015, Mayor Mitch Landrieu proposed that four Confederate monuments be removed. 2015 was also the year of the Charlottesville riots. It took two years, and it was a struggle. It happened in 2017, and about a week after the removal of the statues, which didn't uh, incite any riots or any disturbance whatsoever, he gave a speech to the citizens of New Orleans, and he listed what they had gone through to make this happen, and it was not an easy thing. Decades of prior debate happened about this issue, of course. They had public hearings. Can you imagine what those town hall meetings must have been like? They had approval from three community-led commissions. They had the approval, six to one vote, from the city council to do this. They had two more, in their words, robust public hearings. And then most importantly, they had judicial review of 13 separate federal and state judges and it happened in 2017. Now, what 
are some possible proposals that we could put forth for our community and others like it. The UNC Chapel Hill Chancellor and Board of Trustees has proposed that the Silent Sam statue not be reestablished at the entrance uh, to the university, but that it be moved to a far back corner in a $5 million history center yet to be built. Now, the Star News came out with an editorial in December of last year, and they endorsed this compromise. Proponents of preserve our southern heritage, of course, don't want the statues removed or altered any, in any way. They want them to stay right where they are, as they are. They feel that their removal would be an attempt to erase our past history. Now, I have really struggled with this issue about the statues. I am the daughter of a man, it's hard to believe, who was born only 38 years after the end of the Civil War. And he taught me to stand when Dixie was played. Hmm. But I am really having a difficult time reconciling any pride in my Southern heritage with slavery. It has really been a struggle for me. The, um, the, the, the thing about these statues um, is, gosh, they, they've been around here forever, haven't they? I, I initially thought, well, why don't we just leave them where they are? Why don't we erect a plaque on, at the base that talks about who this person was, what he did, what he stood for, and be sure that people know why that statue was erected? since these statues have been here so long, I thought, well, does anybody even notice them when they walk by? Does anyone still care? Well, I found out, yes, they do. A great many people care. People for whom every statue is a reminder that their ancestors were listed as three-fifths of a person on a bill of sale or an inventory of property. So I changed my mind. I said, to hell with this. My opinion is, take them down. Take every one of them down and make sure people know why they were erected. The perpetrators were con artists. And it's been, as they say, a long con, hasn't it? The mark all those years ago were so gullible. They were so easily convinced that they weren't just valiant warriors in the struggle to preserve states' rights, they were victims. Wilmington has made its step toward restorative justice. The 1898 memorial sculpture downtown on North 3rd Street is an emotional reminder of what happened during what has been believed to be the only successful coup d'etat in the history of the United States. Face your history's flaws and correct them. New Orleans has made their start, and it's going to be just exhilarating to see what they do next. How they move forward with everyone to create something that future generations will be so proud to acknowledge and honor. Wouldn't it be something if our community and our state can do the same?